And I know I hit a slump again. Oops. <laughs> wrapping up the books I read in July. I was really worried there for a second because I just was not reading very quickly or reading very many books that I was like excited about. And the Booktubeathon happened and while I was like hustling to work on those videos, like three of those books that I'm wrapping up today would not be here if I hadn't tried the Booktubeathon reading challenge. And then I ended up finding some like really great, wonderful gems of books that like just turned my whole month around. Booktube wise, Booktubeathon was super great in getting me to like upload six days in a row. Like that was magical. But then I know I hit a slump again. Oh, other updates, I changed the way I did my bookshelf just a little bit, so books that I have not read, I've turned down, that way I can easily see what I have not read. Let's get to the books! I read 10 books in July, which I'm just like super proud of, and just like sticking to my goal, so I can read 120 books this year, like if I can average 10 books a month, like... Superb. First book I read this month was Mirror in the Sky by Aditi Karana. I know I rated it five stars on Goodreads, but it's probably more like a four and a half now that I'm thinking back on it, but I still really, really enjoy this. It's her debut novel. It follows an Indian American girl, Tara, who lives in Connecticut and just doesn't really fit in in her like really wealthy, really white neighborhood and school. Then scientists discover that there's a planet very similar to ours that they're calling Terra, T-E-R-R-A, not like the girl Terra. And that kind of shapes the entire novel of how learning about this like other alien world that's very similar to ours that has human beings just like us and ends up having doppelgangers of every single person on this earth and how that public fascination impacts the private lives of everyday people. I'm not very into realistic and contemporary fiction but this had a wonderful sci-fi overarching premise to handle some like very real and deep issues here. Dealing with family, friends, relationships, high school, even though I'm not in high school, I really really enjoyed this book and I'm really excited to see what else Aditi comes out with. The second book I read this month was Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alary Science and I listened to this as an audiobook because um, Lin-Manuel Miranda narrates it. Yeah, go check it out. It is every bit as wonderful as you would imagine. I gave this four stars. I quickly finished it in two days. It's just a seven hour audiobook. As far as pros and cons go for the audiobook, pro, I was listening to Lin-Manuel Miranda as I fell asleep. Con, I fell asleep listening to Lin-Manuel Miranda. I wish I had like read along to the physical book while listening to it just because there were, I know there were a few parts that I know I missed through listening to it in like the background but I still really enjoyed the audiobook experience. This follows a young boy Aristotle, Ari, who's 15 in like the 1980s and growing up and trying to discover himself and his identity. Then one day Ari meets Dante at the pool, he teaches him how to swim and they become fast friends. This follows them for I think two or three years through high school and their families and their identities and who they are and who they are as friends. This book really made me think about racial and sexual orientation, representation in all sorts of literature and I don't think I would have liked it as much had it been any other combination and that's why representation is important because this book was so authentic to itself there's not another book that's gonna be like it. Except there's gonna be a sequel. There's gonna be a sequel. The third book I read this month was Queen of Shadows by Sarah J. Maas, the fourth in the Throne of Glass series, and I'm finally caught up. <gasps> this was a mammoth of a book to complete. I just was not really into it. Like, Air of Fire I wasn't very much into either. Still feel like Throne of Glass and Corrion of Midnight are like the best in this series. I gave this a three star. It was okay. It made sense, and I can see where it's going but I just am not as attached to Selena's story anymore. I just am like, it's it just, it is what it is. This series follows Selena Sardothian, who is like the most acclaimed assassin in the land, and it follows her struggle in this kingdom where magic is outlawed, and basically there's like a humongous price on her head. There's also princes and fae and fairies and witches. It's a really wonderful magical fantasy world, but I'm like growing a little bit less in love with it than I was in Throne of Glass. The next book I read was The Little Paris Bookshop by Nina George. This book was actually written in German first and has since been translated into English and other languages. I did receive this book for free from Blogging for Books to provide a honest review and I have done so and I have disclaimed. So now we can get into what this book is about. This book follows a man, Jean Perdot, who is 50 something years old, living in Paris and he owns an entire barge and he calls it his literary apothecary. He doesn't sell you the books that you think you need or you came in there for. He sells you the books that you need in your soul and in your life. He loves diagnosing people's problems and giving them books as prescriptions. One day out of the blue he decides to go and search out his lost love and he just like unhooks his barge from like the river and just sails down the Seine all the way to the French Riviera. It reminded me a lot of like travel fantasy novels kind of like the Phantom Tollbooth or Voyage of the Dawn Treader where they go and stop in little places and each is like their own little vignette of people and places that you meet along your way to your final destination. I gave this a four star. I 
really enjoyed it, but like I couldn't identify with a lot of the problems he was going through because he's 50 and like going after his long love and all these regrets and I'm like, I hope I never have like a 30 year old regret. Like I hope to God that I like live my life and live my truth and don't leave anything behind or leave anything to chance or regret and just do what I need to do. There are a bazillion literary references in here so I have like a whole list of like 12 or 13 other books that I want to check out because they're in here. And hold up, there are also recipes in the back of this book along with like some other interviews with the author. But there's a recipe for lavender ice cream and I cannot wait to try it because that just sounds delicious. Doesn't that just sound delicious and lovely and beautiful in every single way? This was also the first book that I read for book two and there's some yellow in the cover so that's kind of the challenge that it completed. The fifth book I read this month was Sing by Vivi Green and this was such a disappointment. I was like, oh, Taylor Swift and this girl like walks outside and falls in love, big mistake. I'm like, oh my gosh, I identify so much with her. And then I read this book and I was like, this was so cheesy. I cannot believe I spent my time reading this. It's an easy breezy beach read. That's the classifications. Even with that in mind, it's still a two star. I was so disappointed and let down by this book. It was so predictable, very fun fluff read but nothing that like challenged me. But they do go to Maine and she meets a fisherman and that just reminds me a lot of a Kinley from The Siren. So that was like the one shining star in this book. I, I don't recommend. I can't even believe I spent my money on it. The next book I read this month kind of saved my reading like month and that was Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. I read this for the read a book you found based off a of booktube challenge. So I completed it and I've started the trilogy. So I'm in the running. I'm getting going. Now I can say that I've read the book before I've seen the movie. This follows a teenager named Jacob who is growing up hearing all these fantastical stories of his grandfather of all these peculiar kids that he grew up with in Wales. Jacob all his life has like brushed them off and not real. But when those stories start to come true, he goes and sets out to find where his grandfather grew up and what all this peculiarity is all about. It wasn't quite what I expected, but it was very clear to understand and to follow. I thought that the peregrine was like just her name and that there wouldn't actually be a peregrine falcon, and then there were peregrine falcons, and I was like, why? I'm scared of birds in case I haven't mentioned this or you haven't heard this before. Uh, click the video up here to hear my story of why I'm scared of birds. This is so cheesy, but I really like the way like the pages feel. Like they're just so like sturdy and like good quality. And like I just am in love with quirk books. They don't publish very many books, but what they publish is so great. It's interspersed with like pictures. It's just like multi-formatted, which I really appreciated that there was so much care into this. The seventh book I read is my favorite book I read this month. I can't believe I waited so long for it. I don't know what I was waiting for. I had it on my shelf for months, and I don't know why I was waiting or why I was scared. And that is A Court of Mist and Fury. That is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. It's the second in the Little Court of Thrones. I wrote the series and I love it so much, and I'm talking really, really fast, but I can't even because I just need to fit my feelings in about this because I love it so much. This is A Court of Thrones and Roses. You thought you loved this? Psh no, you didn't. This is everything. This is all that matters. That book is nothing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so obviously you need to read A Court of Thorns and Roses so you can appreciate and understand Mist and Fury. But this book I thought was my favorite read of this year. It was like the second or third book I read this year. And then I read this and this is everything. So there you go. Court of Mist and Fury. Read it. A Court of Thorns and Roses is a Beauty and the Beast retelling where Feyre, a human, gets swept up over the wall into Prithian where all of the fae and fairies live. Sarah J. Mass really loves fairies. Like, she just really does. And masquerade balls. They've been immortal for hundreds of years and she's 19 years old. So like, obviously, like, there's gonna be a discrepancy in how they handle themselves. And then this continues the tale in a much better fashion and in a beautiful way. This is kind of more of like a Hades and Persephone mythological story retelling rather than Beauty and the Beast. We got rid of the Beauty and the Beast, thank the lord. But this book's everything, so that's really all. Moving on because I could spend all day talking about that book and we're just not because I can't even do a book talk about that or a discussion because I just will not make any coherent sense, so. The eighth book I read this month was The Crown's Game by Evelyn Skye. This is her debut novel. It follows two enchanters in Imperial Russia. So yes, there's magic in Imperial Russia in the 1820s and they have to compete in the crowns game like a fight to the death battle to become the Imperial Enchanter for all of Russia to protect them from all the forces gathering around them. This book will be a duology with the sequel The Crown's Heir coming out sometime next year. This was a very good start. The magic was like really new and refreshing kind of like beautiful to pull the story along. Also, there were the most delicious like desserts in this book, but I'd be lying if I didn't say that like 85% of the reason I bought this book was because of the cover and this spine hold up. Like, can y'all that metallic gold? I saw that and I was like, done. Also, there were pre-order gifts and when there's a pre-order gift, like I'm like, 
50% chance more likely to like buy that book if I already was like interested in it. So maybe now that I've read the book, they'll finally come in. Maybe. I don't know. I hope. I hope so. Be really nice, Bowser and Bray, if you could send me my pre-order gifts. The ninth book I read this month was Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. It came out on July 31st. I went to the midnight release. You can check down below where I think there will be a card up above for the vlog of it. It was so much fun. I went to Tattered Cover, my local indie bookstore, and just had such a blast like hanging out with so many people who know like way more Harry Potter trivia than I do. But then again, it's been a while since I like did a full reread. I completely failed on my reread. Yeah, I only did three out of the seven books for my reread, so... A plus work. I did not prepare for this test. Luckily, if it's been a while since you've read Harry Potter, that shouldn't be too hard in getting into Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. It starts off right where it ends with the epilogue on the train station and everyone heading off to Hogwarts. Back again. This book is written in play format, which was only like difficult for me like the first 20 or so pages, but then it got much easier to read. I actually didn't imagine the movie cast. Most people said that they did, but I was imagining a mix of the play cast and with my own like interpretations of who these characters are and those kind of melded together in what I saw. This play follows Harry Potter's middle child, Albus Severus, as he goes off to Hogwarts for his first year and the friends he makes there and the shadow of his father's fame that hangs over him while he's at Hogwarts and in life. There are parts that I was like, oh my gosh, this is emotional. I'm actually crying. This is beautiful. There were other parts that I was like cracking up, snorting, like WTF, what, who wrote this? This sounds like a fever dream. So rather than being overwhelmed or underwhelmed, I'm just kind of whelmed about this. I gave it a four star and I think that's just because it's Harry Potter. I'm glad I read it, but it's not canon in my opinion. This is kind of just like fan fiction that became canon. There are a few tents in my cover though because uh, I dropped it a few times taking Instagram pics. Don't hate me. It, it's my book. I, it's fine. It's oh god, that's actually really bad. And the final book I read this month was Time Lord Fairy Tales written by Justin Richards. This is a compilation of 15 different fairy tale retellings as if they were in the Whoverse rather than on Earth. So there's like a frozen beauty instead of a sleeping beauty. And then there's like Snow White and the Seven Keys of Doomsday instead of the Seven Dwarfs. I'd have to say my favorite of these was Little Rose Riding Hood because I could actually see that kind of happening in the Hoovers. I had kind of hoped that these were stories that like Time Lords and Time Ladies told their children when they were growing up. And it didn't really seem the case. This kind of just seemed like it was the different monsters and villains and aliens and races and species that we've explored in the Doctor Who TV show. I gave this a three stars. It was okay. It was a quick, nice read. I didn't need to spend my time on this when we already had like so much canon in the actual TV show to work with. I do have to say I have a great respect for this author for going into a canon universe that they didn't develop or create and putting their own two cents into what kind of happened. Whenever a TV or movie screenwriter goes into something that they didn't imagine of themselves and they can put themselves into these other characters shoes i'm just always in awe because i cannot imagine writing anything other than my own original stories or original characters so it's an okay month not like my best as far as like keeping up my enthusiasm about reading a court of mist and fury definitely changed that because i've gone back and reread quite a few of my favorite scenes so far i'm like really scared because i want to find something just as good as that and not find as many duds as i happen to find this month Thank you so much for watching. My name is Laura. This has been Bookies and Cookies. I post videos weekly. I love each and every one of you. I hope you never forget it, that you are loved. And remember that the second book in a trilogy can definitely surprise you. Thanks, guys. Let's get on to the rappy raps. What are you saying? What are your words? <laughs> I read 10 books in August. It's July. Her struggles with life and, and, and things. <laughs> That was the worst description ever. It's the lip gloss. The lip gloss is making me have problems speaking.